Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan with the Chart Guys Trader for the last 13 years and I've experienced many hype sectors and in this video we're going to look at whether or not this AI hype run is justified, is it a bubble? We're going to look at some of the major companies that I'm watching and the charts and setups that I'm going to be looking for for trades in this coming week. And before we get to that, we're going to look at a couple clips that I made for social media last weekend because this previous week of trading has only magnified my sentiment in these clips. So I've been referring to the current market environment as the great washout. After the COVID lows, everybody started participating. We had easy gains and it was fun. And then we entered a bear market and people started losing or they got bored and went to do something else. We've had a lot less volatility recently. And so in my opinion, that portion of the retail capital will come back into the market, but it's going to require greed, a tale as old as time. We need to see a sector that has the possibility for hundreds of percent gains in a short period of time. And whether that comes from AI hype or some other kind of new technology or a cannabis federal law change that ignites that sector, we have this portion of the population that has gotten the dopamine hit and they want to get back into markets, in my opinion, those of that survived and kept their capital. And so I'm just keeping an eye out for what's going to be the next retail grabber to bring them back into the market. So we know AI is all the buzz right now, and we have the potential of what this technology could do in the future. And of course, we as traders want to know, how can we profit off of that potential? And I would consider myself a hype sector specialist just because I have participated in so many of them, whether it was cannabis 2013, 2018, crypto multiple times over the last six years. And one thing that is notably standing out to me is this setup is currently very different. People are already talking about an AI bubble. But because we are coming from a year and a half of bear market on some of these names like PLTR or AI, it's a very different setup. I am used to bubbles being euphoria, blue sky breakout, hundreds of percent gains. And so in my opinion, the charts are not telling me that we're anywhere near any kind of bubble at this point. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out for signs that that euphoria is building, but I do not think an AI bubble is here in the short term. So I'm going to keep an eye out for that opportunity. All right, so first we're gonna look at the stocks that I'm watching, and then we're gonna talk about how I'm gonna to look to make entries at this point now that some of the momentum and euphoria is already kicking in. So I don't think we are in a bubble as far as where we stand right now, but we have to have game plans for every single trade that we take because people get in a lot of trouble where they try and trade something like this, and then if they don't have a stop loss and the trade goes against them, then they turn into investors. Say, well, okay, maybe in a couple years, you know, the, the price will get back to where we are now and, and then I'll get green. And that's a very dangerous spot to be in. Just ask anybody in crypto with the 80% drawdowns, in cannabis with the never ending drawdown. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. Because markets are so forward looking, we often get these hype euphoria, massive moves far preceding the actual fundamental events that they are pricing in essentially. And then, you know, you can pull back for a year or two. So have a game plan for every single position, have a stop loss for every single position, but the, there's, I'm breaking it up into large caps and small caps in the AI space. And then we'll touch on a little bit of quantum computing because that's the next buzzword that in my opinion is gonna be the next technology, you know, future looking, uh, FOMO type of play and AI and quantum computing can definitely go hand in hand together, but there are companies that are specifically focused. So the large caps, as we know, NVDA is a catalyst here for this recent surge, specifically this week on its earnings, you know, plus 30% on its earnings reaction, blue sky breakout, all time highs. As we know, the best spot to be as a bull is in blue sky breakout because price discovery allows for fast, hard moves to the upside. And we know eventually NVDA will top out and it will pull back significantly. But before that happens, you're going to have bulls looking to buy daily consolidation for a higher low. Then once we see weekly consolidation, you're going to have bulls buying weekly consolidation, anticipating that higher low. And then when we get monthly consolidation, we're going to be looking for a monthly higher low on NVDA. So just keep in mind that bulls are going to be looking to buy every dip uh, for a while. And, and that's going to be the theme for a while. In the short term, I do believe NVDA is worth watching as far as a, a temperature gauge for the sector. It'll be interesting to see, you know, if NVDA consolidates, do we see the micro caps, the smaller names 
pull back with it? Do we have a direct correlation or do we see some rotation where large caps pull back and then the small caps run? That has certainly happened in sector euphoria before. So I'm going to view NVDA, the semiconductor ETF SMH, which is approaching all time highs, not there yet. These are the monthly time frames we're watching first here. And then Microsoft, Microsoft is approaching all time highs. These are my large cap temperature gauges. And I have Microsoft, just full disclosure, I don't have any positions in these names aside from Microsoft uh, in the IRA. And, and once that chat GBT news came out, that had me say, all right, I want this in my IRA and then established a trade plan based on the technicals from there. But it was a fundamental catalyst that got me interested. So all time high test is in play. And then you look at these smaller cap names, AI, nowhere near the all time high. We just had a year and a half bear market where we dropped 80% plus. And now we're trying to confirm the first monthly uptrend in the history of this stock. PLTR, another one, has never had a monthly uptrend in the history of the, no, I take that back. We did have one back here, but a very clear shift basing of support. And you can see this is supply and demand of shares. The demand for shares far exceeded supply for the first few months. And then supply of shares exceeded demand for a year and a half. And then the scales between supply and demand started tilting to balance. And that's what this sideways is doing. That's the scales like, oh, you know, we're pretty evenly priced. Supply and demand is pretty even here. And then you see this happen where demand significantly exceeds supply again. And so we have a bull move up in the highest move up that we've seen, the highest price in 52 weeks. So again, when you, when you show me a name like PLTR or AI, are we in a bubble? Not even close. If everything looked like NVDA, then we could say, all right, we need to be cautious up here, but that's not the case. So I don't think one name can dictate a bubble for the entire sector. And then the last name here, we've got IONQ, which is a quantum computing play. And again, same deal. I don't know anything about the fundamentals of IONQ. I just know that it's benefiting from this hype and it's a low cap name. So same thing, we built a base of support for essentially a year, balancing out supply and demand, and now demand far exceeding supply over the last couple of weeks. So what am I looking at for entries at this point? So you have to determine if you're looking for day trades or swing trades, obviously. I'm a day trader, but I will utilize day trading to position for swing trading as well. So I love back burner trades and if you don't know what that is, Google chart guys back burner and watch that in-depth video about this trade strategy because it is the trade strategy for how to trade breakout cycles because it's entry on consolidation where the risk and reward is much less favor or much more favorable. And it is uh, a trading style that has a very high win rate when you are in a strong trending market or sector or individual name. So I know for NVDA that I will absolutely be buying next hourly oversold conditions for a bounce, looking for a daily higher low. I don't know if we're gonna head up to 420 before that happens. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I know that when it does happen, that's a trade setup that I'm looking for. And my style of trading will be, if it's just a day trade, I play the hourly oversold bounce and I scale out into that bounce. If I wanna swing trade, I make my entry into oversold conditions and again, I talk in the in-depth video how I do that. And maybe I make a couple entries. And then once the bounce gets going on the hourly, I sell a partial position. I stick my stop loss under that low, break even risk-free, and I try and swing that position. And in the strongest uptrends, hourly oversold will mark daily higher lows before you get continuation. And then if you're wrong, hourly oversold marks a daily higher low, but we don't get continuation and we start more significant consolidation, you stop out, break even, no harm done. So that is how I try and initiate swing positions in big runner names. I know that I'll be interested in the next daily oversold conditions for NVDA. Who the heck knows when that's gonna happen? Might not happen for months, but again, it's the first time you hit oversold conditions on each time frame. So we could first five minute oversold for NVDA. I played that bounce on Thursday. Gap up on the earnings, big drop to first five minute oversold, 7% bounce. So I love those oversold bounces. SMH, same deal. I'll be watching for a daily higher low, looking for hourly oversold. Eventually I'll be looking for weekly higher lows in these names. 
Microsoft, same thing. So again, I'm watching these three things as a temperature gauge for AI in the large cap space. Small caps, AI, if we break 34.68, it's the first monthly uptrend that this stock has ever had. And again, look at the volume down here. I mean, this is just monster volume. If, this is a big if, if market fears are alleviated and the S&P 500 is headed back to all time highs, and again, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm 50, 50, whether that could happen or not. I'm going to be very open to a lower high and very open to an all time high. If we head back to all time highs and this, you know, if we get a lot of euphoria return to markets, then these names can absolutely go multiple hundreds of percent off of their lows. And the low here was $10. You know, we can head up to 50, 60. I mean, if we get a 50% retracement, that's a lot of upside. 50% would be taking us almost 1,000%. So again, do I think that's going to happen? I have no idea, but the opportunity is there potentially. And so I want to position for that possibility. I know that I will be interested in AI for a weekly high or low. And I will probably be looking for AI and PLTR for small, uh, higher risk IRA positions next weekly consolidation for the potential that these are long-term bottoms being set. And again, whether or not we head right back to all-time highs, I'm not going to try and speculate with that, whether that's going to happen. But even if we don't, you know, maybe it's maybe it's a multiple-year bottom being set in these AI names. And so I want to have a position if that's the case. If it's not the case, I want to stop out without losing a whole lot. That's the name of the game with trading. IONQ, tightening up sideways here. Key support this week is going to be 915. And bulls want to see a break of 1022 to try and set that daily high or low and keep this uptrend going. And again, another one that's coming off a longer term bottom. This is not one that I would put in the IRA just because I don't know anything about the company or the financial statements or anything like that. But again, it's just keeping an eye out for that hype and euphoria. Again, with high risk comes high reward. So, or with high reward comes high risk, meaning in order to see these significant bull moves, there are significant drawdowns as a part of this market environment. So you can see a name shoot up 100% off its lows and then pull back 30%. So you have to always be anticipating that, yes, it's a strong name, but that doesn't mean we can't drop 20, 30% in daily consolidation. So keep that in mind to ensure that you're using stop losses and, and you know having good risk management on your trading. But as long as NVDA, NVDA stays strong, the AI narrative is definitely gonna remain strong and keeping a close eye on where that rotation goes. Here's a list of my AI names. You know, three months ago, the, the first little wave of AI hype came out. And so we did, you know, we put together our watch lists and we're keeping an eye on these names. And so these are a bunch that I'm keeping an eye on. But again, I can't be watching all these things every day. So I narrow down the list. I know the large caps that I'm keeping an eye on. I've got a few small caps that I'm keeping an eye on. And that's how I'm going to remain uh, focused on the sector at this point. And, you know, things can change, news can shift and other names can get my attention. But for now, this is how I am viewing the sector and going to look to capitalize as a bull, looking for hourly higher lows, daily higher lows, and weekly higher lows, unless we get a major red flag in the broader market, which will come with a whole bunch of bear volume and the NASDAQ having a significant sign of a reversal. Otherwise, I'm going to be on team bull for the AI hype, and we will recognize when the shift takes place. We will recognize the shift taking place because oversold bounces will not be marking the lows. Hourly oversold bounce may end up a bear flag and then dropping to a lower low. That's how we know more significant consolidation is coming. And maybe then we'd be patient and wait for the weekly higher low from there. So taking it one day at a time and keeping an eye on the, the social media metrics, Wall Street Bets is definitely all over the AI sector right now. And of course, CNBC with the pumping they do, but uh, stay, stay protective. Bull entries are on consolidation to have the best risk and reward. Always establish your game plan, your stop loss in advance before you're ever in the trade and try and capitalize on this momentum, but ensuring that you're not going to be holding the bag when the music stops. Feel free to ask any questions. Certainly going to be covering this sector a lot more in the coming months and years. 
and I hope you have a great long weekend.